Hello again, welcome to the Academy. This is a video, part of a video series on Calculus 3 topics, and this time we'll be talking about the divergence theorem. So last time we talked about the curl theorem, and this is a similar uh, process. So we begin with an intuitive derivation, and so if we have the formal definition, of the divergence, you know, divergence of f of f is defined formally as the limit as v goes to zero of some volume of a ball around the point of the surface integral of the flux of the surface around this volume, S, this S is V, the volume of F of the S over B. So this is as V gets closer to zero, gets closer and closer to being just a point. So again, just like with the curve theorem, we're going to make sort of an intuitive assumption that this resembles a derivative just like an ordinary derivative change in f over change in x as x goes this delta x goes to zero is derivative with respect to x. I'm going to say that the divergence of f is another way of writing divergence is equal to what well, we're going to say this is the same thing except instead of df it's going to be d this thing and then on the bottom it's going to be dv because there's a v and of course when we solve this we get the divergence of f times dv equals d of this And then to solve, get rid of the d, we integrate both sides, and we get the theorem which says that the integral of the divergence dv equals the surface integral of the function dot ds, vector ds, which is the flux. So basically we go from a limit in a small form to a general form in for a whole region v and for any region v we can if we sum the divergence of the field throughout the whole region we get the same thing as the flux let me rewrite this over here. This is a really a triple integral because it's dv. Let me write it as that triple integral over v of the divergence of f dv. And if this is v, then the surface is the boundary of v, and we use this sometimes for the boundary. So that's just f ds, or f dot n ds is an alternate form of the boundary of v. So this is saying that the sum of all divergences, so all sources and sinks, so the divergence, if we assume this is sort of representing a fluid, f is a fluid flow, then the flux through this whole thing can be determined as the sum of all sources minus the sinks because it's a negative divergence where they're converging. So if we see all the points where it's diverging and all the points where it's converging and we add them all together we should get the total flux going out of this region. Which makes sense because that means that more fluid is being created if it's flowing out or if it's flowing in that means more is being sucked out, 
are depleted from the inside of the region. But again, this is an interesting theorem because it is, once again, a generalization of the fundamental theorem of calculus, which, as we know, says, states that the integral from a to b of the derivative of f of x is simply the function f of x evaluated at the endpoints of this integral, a to b, which is the boundary of the integral. So once again, we have the derivative and the divergence is a sort of differential form for uh, vector fields becoming just f by itself. So we have the same thing here. And then once again, the integral, we go from three integrals to two integrals. So one of the integrals is dropped by the differential being cancelled out. And so this only depends on the boundary of this surface, of this region, not once inside it. Just like here, we only look at the endpoints when calculating it, not on anything else in between. And so, an interesting use of this theorem, of the divergence theorem, as well as the curl theorem that I talked about previously, in physics is Maxwell's equations. Which are four equations of electricity and magnetism. And they pretty much describe all of classical electromagnetism. So the first one is Gauss's law for electric field, which pretty much states that the flux of the electric field yes, equals the charge enclosed divided by a constant epsilon. Now this is for any region, the total charge inside of the surface is enough to tell you the flux of this electric field. This allows us to give another form to this equation because we know that the charge inside might not be a constant. If it's a constant, then it's simple to calculate. But the density, the charge density, the charge density is. QdV is the charge over volume at each point, and so it allows us to calculate that the charge is just the density dV, the integral of the density dV, in this case a triple integral. And so we can rewrite this as Charge density dv divided by epsilon naught. Now we know from this divergence theorem that this is equivalent to this. So this is really the triple integral of the divergence of the electric field dv. And this is the constant, and say it's the triple integral of rho over epsilon dv. Now, Gauss's law says that this must be true for all uh, volume of V that we choose, which means the only way that's possible is if the integrands are equal to each other. And therefore, we have the, the divergence of E of the electric field must equal the charge density at each point divided by epsilon. So that's the first equation, which is this and this two forms. Another one can be done in a similar way using the curl theorem. So the other one states that the integral of E 
electric field dot dr is equal to negative the integral of the derivative of the partial derivative b, the magnetic field, which is a magnetic field. A. And we know from the curl theorem that this is actually equal to the double integral of the curl, the surface integral of the curl. So once again, we can drop the integral because this is true for all circular paths C or surfaces S. This is actually Faraday's law of electromagnetic induction, which says that electric fields curl around changing magnetic fields. This is how the electricity is generated and generated, you have a changing magnetic field or changing magnetic flux through a loop here, in a magnetic field that changes, or if the flux changes, then an electric field will curl around here, producing a current in the wire. So that's how electricity is generated because of this law. And there are two more laws, I'll just write them down. They're derived using the same technique. One of them is that the magnetic flux is zero, the net magnetic flux, which is equivalent to the divergence of the magnetic field being equal to zero. And then the fourth law says that magnetic circulation is I which is the current, electric current times mean naught with a constant, plus should be mean naught epsilon naught times the double integral of derivative, oops, partial derivative of E with respect to time dot ds, which again using a similar technique we can derive if I is a current in a wire, then the current density, if we say there's a current density J, we can find that J, we can integrate J over this slice A to get the current. So this is a double integral, this is a double integral, and this is a double integral by the curl theorem which means that magnetic fields curl around current density and changing electric fields. And so these Maxwell's equations for electricity and magnetism, and using the divergence and curl theorems, we can alternate between the two forms for each equation. And there's the integral form and the this del operator form. Well, that's all for these calculus T topics. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.